Good evening everyone from Atrium Stadium in Dwyer Field here in beautiful Mason, Ohio. ICRC Sports is proud to bring you high school football here. Friday night football GMC variety with the visiting Oak Hills Highlanders bringing an 0-2 record versus the Comets, Mason Comets, which are 2-0. Steve Parker, Chris Asbrock joining me. Chris, what are the keys to the game tonight, buddy? Well, Steve, we've got a couple of them here. The first one, it's, you know, plain and simple. You have to win the game in the trenches. Other than that, I mean, it's, it's where these guys, that's where the game's won in the trenches. Second key to this game is you got to win the turnover battle. A couple teams that Mason have played so far, they've won that turnover battle there, and therefore you get a victory from it. The third one is ride the waves of momentum. This game, up and down, is constant constant waves of momentum. It's the team that wins. The team that's going to win is basically going to ride that momentum the best. And those are your three keys to the game, sir. All right. Well, we got a couple of players that we want to highlight. First, for Oak Hills, we're talking about the senior quarterback, 5'10", 161 pound, David Holt. Devin Holt, he's 17 to 38 on the season for 233 yards. He averages 6.1 yards per attempt. He does have two interceptions along with two touchdowns. So, you know, he's definitely one to watch. And Mason, you know, they should be able to get some get some pressure on him and and make the senior, you know, earn the uh, earn the victory for him tonight. Holt, again, uh, the senior does a good job. He's got to manage the game a little bit better from, from what I saw. Now for the Comets, we're talking about the man, the myth, the legend, the running back. Nolan McCormick. He is the man, the myth, the legend, like you said. 36 rushes so far this season for 198 yards. That is a 5.5 average per rush. He does have two touchdowns on the season. His longest run is 75 yards. So McCormick's going to be one to definitely watch for tonight. Uh, we also want to keep our eyes eyes peeled for Michael Molnar, the quarterback, the junior, who's getting the start this year for the Comets. Chris, he's got a pretty impressive 148.2 quarterback rating after week two. So that's pretty good for a first-time starter. Yeah, it's pretty impressive. The kid's got a he's got an arm on him. 11 of 18 on the season so far, only 108 yards, but. Again, he's slinging it around, two touchdowns, no interceptions. All right, well, folks, we're going to jump out for a quick public address announcement. Chris and I will bring you all the action right here from Dwyer Field, Atrium Stadium here on Friday Night Football. We'll be right back with all the action. Looking for future leaders we can believe in? Look no further than the high school student athletes right here in Ohio. High school sports teach young people how to be effective leaders. It includes learning to listen, accepting responsibility, being a good role model, and it's about respect. The result, it transcends sports. It gives us hope for the future. This message presented by the Ohio High School Athletic Association and the Ohio Interscholastic Athletic Administrators Association. On air or online, this is media for your community. This is ICRC TV. teams have taken the field. We're just about ready to get the season underway. ICRC Friday Night Football. We are back here. Great attack with the 10-yard line. Touchdown, Vikings. Side, he's looking for Hughes. He got has the separation. Touchdown! Welcome back. We're ready to get started here. Chris, let's talk a little bit about the starting, the starters, at least on the offense for Oak Hills. We talked about Holt, 
but he's supported by Patrick Gibbons, a 5'4", 150-pound senior. Nate Ogg, who's another senior. Now, these, these guys are all the skill position. Matthew Martin is at the Y. He's 6'2", 220. Kyle Toon is at the H-back at 5'11", 165. He's just a sophomore. So Logan Heyman is running that tight end spot. And then Devin Roper is at the X, 6'1", 120. Now, we've got left tackle, though. we got some size along the tackle here. We've got Jacob Schorsch who's 6'3", 235, a freshman <laughs> starting in Oak Hills. We've got Dominic Moore, who's 5'11", 275, a junior. Jonathan Kiefer, or Flyer, 6'1", 278, a junior. Sam Johnson, 6'1", 232, a senior. And at the right tackle, we've got Jaden Bodie at 6'4", 247. So they got a little bit of size up front. They do, and that's that was obviously one of the key to the games is you have to win the game in the trenches. Now, the thing is, they do have some size, but the one thing to watch out for, Jacob Schorsch, the 6'3", 235 freshman, left tackle, that's the blind side of your quarterback right there. That's one thing to watch in this game. If Mason's able to get some pressure and take advantage of the fact that he's only a freshman, he could force, he could force Oak Hills into some major turnovers and, and really swing this game one way or another. On the defensive side for the visiting 0-2 Highlanders, we've got Dominic Beerman, who's at the uh, strong tackle position, 5'9", 600 senior, 600 or 200-pound senior. Micah Hicks is the junior running at the nose, 5'8", 241. At the strong side tackle, we've got Gabriel Byrne, 5'11", 181, and then inside linebackers and outside linebackers across. We've got Tyler Jones at 187, a senior. Matthew Fulton, 6'1", 181, a senior. Nate Ogg, 6'2", 200 pounds, a senior. And Matthew Hodges, 6'1", 215, as a senior. So they've got a, a complete linebacking core of all seniors. And then they've got seniors all across the defensive backfield except for one spot. So Eli Weitzel, Nolan Goddard, and Logan Heeman are all seniors. And then they're in there with the... Uh, Weak side corner, Ian Schaffer, who's just a, Ian Schaffer, who's just a junior. So, a lot of a lot of mix of experience, a lot of juniors and seniors on that defensive side for the visiting Highlanders. Now, when we talk about the Comets, let's talk a little bit about offense, Chris. Michael Molnar, Mar, Michael Molnar, you talked about his numbers, but he's got some some help back there with him with Dolan McCormick, the senior running back. Yeah, Nolan McCormick is the guy. I mean, along with uh, Ben Fosnott and Mark Starks as your tight ends, uh, you have you have uh, Larson Brown, who's a sophomore wide receiver as well, along with Eli Jordan and Michael Rue. That's two seniors right there in your wide receiving course. And Mason has some experience in the skill positions. And obviously up front, Mason has the size and the advantage, you know, in, in terms of experience as well, with only one non-senior in this lineup, with it being Skylar Horn. And folks, working that tackle side, typically on the strong side, Paul Rodriguez wearing number 78. That's a rather large young man, and, and again, he gets the job done. He's as long as as well as the other road, road graders out there. Petroselli, Horn, Ekafi, and Bilo. And we'll go over the Comet defense here. Comets are getting ready to kick off. Ryan Rumaniski with a deep kick. Trying to return it out there to the side. Good job by the Comets of knocking him down short of the 20 yard line. That was uh, Logan Heyman who tried to make that return and blocking broke down pretty quick on him. He got stuck pretty good there, just short of the 20. So Islanders will start off this first drive just shy of the 20 yard line. This is a major opening series here for Oak Hills. They were shellacked last week against Coleraine, 30 to nothing. Here's their chance. Get some momentum going in this game against this Mason defense. Schlack? Yeah, schlacked, yeah. I like it. I got a bunch of terms for you. <laughs> Holt, under center, gives it off to the tailback and coming from the backside Making a big hit there for the Comets, number 13, Jackson Orlando. And, folks, keep an eye on this guy. He'll be all over the field 
on the defensive side. Absolute stud defensively. And again, you saw him just fly through there. Two yard loss in the first play here. Great start for the Mason defense. Orlando did a good job of reading, reacting, and, and busting right in there. So we're second down and we'll call it 12. Oh, fakes it, he's gonna roll left. He's pointing out some blockers. He finds a seam, gets up close to the third of the yard line where he's finally knocked down and he'll be just shy of the first down. That'll set up a third and short. That was a big tackle there. If he gets past him, he, there was a lot of green there for him to, uh, to keep on running. Now you're sending down a third, and big third down here for Mason's defense, third and one. Again, game's gonna be one of the trenches, see if Mason's defensive line can get it going here. Bolton, Holt working from the shotgun. Inside handoff. There's a push, and it looks like that spot's going to give him just enough for the first down. As the officials go ahead and weigh the chain crew down. That was, that was a nice lean forward, though. So Highlanders get a first down, continue their drive. Holt now going to roll to the right side, looking, 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 flips it out there, complete to number 16. Jacob Day, a sophomore. So they, they did a pretty good job of squaring that thing out. They pick up seven on it, and we'll call it six. So here's one thing to watch for so far. Their only success that they've had out of these, you know, minimal plays here is getting Holt to, you know, to roll out of the pocket. That's really where they've been able to make some noise. If it goes in between the tackles, they've had little, very little success. So let's see what they do here on third down. Holt empties his backfield, sends a man in motion, hands it to him, looking to get that jet sweep. He gets the edge, he cuts it inside. Good job of leaning that thing forward by number eight. Logan Heyman, nice job of cutting that thing inside. Yeah, so you see here, again, you're getting Logan Heyman and, you know, on the sweep there, and that's where Oak Hills is going to, they obviously feel that they're going to have success getting the ball on the outside instead of just pushing right up the middle. So that's one thing to see if Mason's defense, how they're able to adjust here on the fly as Oak Hills is starting to move the ball down the field. Highlanders in the Comet territory. Well, looking left, now he's got to pull it down. He's got an alley to run through, and it closes quickly, however. And coming up to give him a stick is Mr. Jackson Orlando after he picks up a couple. We'll call it second and seven. Let's see here, Mason again. Unable to get the get the stop there in the of Devin Holt in the backfield. Well, they did. They must have had good coverage, Chris, because he did have to pull it down. So. He did. Holt on the miss counter in misdirection, bouncing out and looking for a place to go and can't find a place to go is number 22. That's Steve Watson. And that was unfortunate for Watson there. That is, he was able to break out of it as they stopped him. As you can see here, nowhere to go. Didn't go down, stayed alive, but unfortunately for him, you know, he ended up losing a good chunk of change there. Bringing up big third down and 10 here for Mason's defense. So yeah. let's see what they can dial up here. Tell you what, Orlando was out there. He cut off the outside and he had nowhere to go. Holt working from the shotgun. Takes the snap, looking, looking, looking. Got to pull it down because there there's heat on him and down he goes. There it was. I was expecting that you had to think a blitz was going to be coming there. And Adam Ruminski, or Ruminski, got a little excited there. Just went right through and made the play. And that's exactly what you want to see from Mason here. You're going to see the replay. Holt had no chance. He drops back and then boom, there we go. There's a guy right there. He had yeah. no chance. Rum Ruminski just beat the tackle. I mean, the guard, just like a drum that time for the nice sack. So having the turn the ball over the punter is Chad Smith he takes his time 
Nice angle kick to the middle of the field. Oh, and catching it on the run. Whoo, that was kind of dangerous. <laughs> Noel McCormick there gambling. Riverboat gambler on that play. That was, whoo. Sometimes it's it's best if you just let it go on a butt. Well, you know, typically when you're a special teams coach, you're telling the guy, look, if it's coming at you at a line, if you can't get it and back away and let it carry into the end zone, because the way that the wind's blowing tonight, I think that thing would still be rolling north. I was going to say, that's yeah, that's headed up and uh, definitely in the parking lot if it keeps going. Comets start their first drive right around their own 15. Michael Molnar under center. No, now he's going to back away and they're going to run that pistol, if you will. McCormick right next to him. Takes the snap, looking, looking, looking. Got a man wide in the oh. gap, and he just locked it into the defender's arms. Number nine picks it right off, and he read it the entire way, Chris. And he's still running where he's finally knocked out of bounds. Yeah, that one's on, that's 100% on Michael Molnar there. He definitely did not look away. He gave Ian Schaefer a, just a, the, the perfect opportunity to pick that one off. You just watch him here. He just he read him the entire way. That's an easy Bonner. interception for, you know, somebody in the secondary to, to make that play. So it's a live and you learn type situation here for the junior quarterback. Got a rebound now and now defense is, now Mason's deep in that. They just got to step up now and keep him off the board. Yeah, Schaefer just dropped back where the quarterback's eyes and just stayed right underneath the receiver. See, this I mean, he was beat, too. I oh, mean, he was, Mol yeah. Molnar gets the ball out there to him, and, and you know, we're we've got Comet six points, so time for the Comets to stiffen up here is Holt. She's going to work on a shotgun. Inside handoff. Tough sledding, though, the inside there. It's Caden Evans. Down close to you know, the 10-yard line. Adam Evans is there to... Knocks some heads around. It's Patrick Gibbons on the run there. First rush for him so far today. But this is where Steve, this is where the, you know, the one the key of our, you know, the key to the game. Ride the waves of momentum. This is what you got to do now. Hold on your center this time. Takes the handoff. Pocket collapses around him, but he gets outside contained. He's looking to get to that stick. Inside the stick, he reaches, and the ball goes out of bounds. So what's the referee going to do? So they're going to mark him down around the one? Yeah, they're going to get mark him out at the one-yard line. I guess his knee touch. I'd love to see that on replay, see if he lost the rock before his knee touch, because he fumbled that through the end. Uh, that's exactly what I was thinking, man. right as you said that. Let's see if we can cue that up on replay here. It's Wolf following here. Again, Holt just turns on the Jets. Oh, that's a tough one. Uh, I, you know. Yeah, that's a that's a tough one there. But now uh, we don't we don't know where his feet were. Yeah. In this we didn't get the angle to see if his foot might have touched the side. Bar, Based off of what I saw, I'm going to say turnover. But now inside in. handoff, and there's the score. So Okills gets on the board first, thanks to a common turnover. See, that's a big touchdown there for Oak Hill. Steve Watson on the one-yard rush. Again, they were shut out last week. Get on the board early here in the first quarter. Ride the waves of momentum, and that's what Oak Hills has done so far. They took advantage of that turnover. And we got the place kicker in there. That's Kaylee Hebert. Oh, it's blocked. And it's blocked. So Kaylee's a sophomore. <laughs> Trying to get some points on the board, and, and unfortunately, it's blocked. So the Highlanders find themselves at 6:44 left to go here in the first quarter. Oh, six to nothing. Big beneficiary from a turnover, and a senior who did a good job on picking the ball off, not only reading the quarterback's eyes, but pretty nice return. So yeah, that that set the entire play up right there. That entire drive up. Again, but this, you know, the block of the extra point, that's a small victory right there for, you know, for the Mason special team machine right there. You give up a touchdown, you're able to get that, again, just a small victory. You know, in a game like this, you're down 6 nothing. 
Yeah, let's see if we can see, you know, again, the touchdown again. Just a nice inside run. And that's, that's all himself, because he had nothing but comments in front of him. Yeah, that's a great, great job there by, by Watson, just to make it happen. A little jump cut, get the pass low, boom, you're in. He wasn't giving up on that one. You got to respect that. Hey, Truck, do we have the uh, replay on the block, too? We could see that after the kick. They're asking us about that for the stats up here. We could figure that one out. All right, there's a kickoff. Go. Down to number four. For the comments. That's a nice it. run. There we Borders. Go. Borders working his way down the left sideline. He's over midfield, and Irison Borders gives the Comets great starting position as they're into Oak Hill's territory. So they'll get started at about to Oak Hill's 42, 43 yard line. That, Steve, is how you flip field position right there. And that's how you take advantage of a short kick coming off of a touchdown that your defense just gave up. Great job there by Borders. He was not going to be done. I, you know what I noticed, Chris, though, is, is that ball, it was short, but it hung up long enough that the blockers were able to form that wedge right in front Bingo. of him. You're right. 100% so right. He got a little air underneath him, but they did have the opportunity. There's a pitch. McCormick looking for a place to go. Stutter step. Drags a couple of tacklers with him, and he's finally knocked down at about the 35-yard line. That's a nice pickup of about seven. What I love about that run there by McCormick is the patience he had. Once he got that ball, you see he just didn't explode right through the hole. He gave it a little time, let the let the blockers, you're going to see the replay here, watch this. He doesn't rush hard, lets the blockers take advantage, and then he, you know, a little stutter step, a little hop step there, boom, he gets seven yards on that rush. Great job there by Nolan McCormick. Nolan no, under center. Gets, flips it out. Unfortunately, there was no, really no place for number 18 of the Comets to go. Mr. Lewis. Kobe Lewis on that one there. So Lewis look, was looking for a, a seam, was trying to see if anything would develop. Good job of pursuit by Oak Hills that time. I was gonna say that play was kind of blown up right from the get-go. As you can see the Oak Hills defense, they penetrated pretty early there and just kind of made things difficult for Kobe Lewis to get any yardage on that play. Okay, so third and a long three. Molnar under center. There's a hammer back in front of McCormick and he's gonna follow the hammer back through the hole, bounces it outside, jukes a few tacklers, gets across the 25 yard line. Good enough for another Comet first down. This kid, he's running very patient this year, Chris. I tell you what, and that's what you have to do as a running back. Again, you're gonna see in the replay here, look at it. He just, he doesn't, he doesn't rush into it. He, he lets the play develop in front of him, and that is a, that's a sign of a great running back. And McCormick, again, that's why he's been one of the top running backs so far in the GMC. And he's definitely proven it again tonight. Experienced, been playing a lot since he was even a sophomore, so nice to see him getting his props for all the work that he's put in. Now he's going to look to go left, trying to read the blocks. That's a nice backside chase down for the defender from Oak Hill. So I believe that was number 61. It's Gabriel Byrne, the 5'11 sophomore outside linebacker. Great job of pursuit. However, there is a flag on the play, so we're going to see what that's going to do. Came from the referee on the far sideline. Uh, some shenanigans. Time it's with a hold. Oh, two personal fouls there. That's a tough one. Tough break. And that is how you shoot yourself in the foot right there. That's a tough after you get a. Solid drive going. You can't you, you can't do that kind of stuff there, and that's send yourself back here and see what Mason can do. Yeah, I had a referee one time that, that in a game that heard somebody use some some rather <laughs> rather strong language, and you know what he said to the kid? He threw the flag and looked at him. And he said, "You kiss your mom with that mouth, son." <laughs> Kids these days, I tell you what, Molnar back he's going to go ahead and throw it 
That's a nice pitch and catch. Lewis with a chance to catch it and, and try to shake a few tacklers loose so they get some of it back there. Yeah, you see the replay here, just quick route there. Kobe Lewis, a couple yards, turns around, boom, right there. Chris, now that was a first down and about 20 something because they gave him the first down, but then the chirp and first forced him back. Yeah. So now we're at second down and about 16 to go. So Molnar now going to work out of the pistol with McCormick right behind him. Now McCormick sets over to his right. Yeah, trips wide there. Oh, McCormick. Yeah, nice. trying to set up yep. the screen, but number 37 for Old Kills, Matthew Hodges, had said, nah, 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 baby, nah. <laughs> he read it the entire time. He must be the guy that's designed to uh, shadow McCormick. That's, yeah, that's kind of what it looked like because they blew that play up relatively quickly. It was a tough sled in there for McCormick. As soon as he caught that, Hodges was right on him. It gave him no chance. Uh, that leaves us at, at fourth down, so looks like Comets are going to go into punting formation. Nolan McCormick is back there to do the punting. Oak Hills will put nobody deep. They'll figure if you're going to punt it from the 30s, and now they sneak the guy back. McCormick now with an angle kick. Oh, and that's yeah, that's that's going to put him inside the 20. But they're going to net out, you know, maybe maybe 18 yards on that kick. That's it, tough. That is tough. So with 2:38 to go, Oak Hills takes over. They're holding a six six zip lead. And Chris, I mean, if Oak Hills can, can mount a drive here. It's going to be one of your keys to the game, man. They're going to wrestle that old momentum monster away. Well, I tell you what, they've uh, they've done a pretty good job with it so far. Now, again, you got to continue to ride it, and they've got it right now. Defense has stepped up for them. Let's see if the offense can complement them here. Hope with a pitch fake rolls out, gets it outside. Oh, and nothing nice. doing is number eight for the Comets on defense. I don't have a number for that young man, but he did a heck of a job. Matthew Martin on that tackle there. So the, that'll be a set up a second and eight. Well, gives it off and look at that boy. That's a big time <laughs> tackle. Number 21 for the Comets. Jake Bates. He's the one. He was one of the ones I was. I wanted to kind of touch on. He's a. I, I mean, just a stud linebacker as well. A sophomore. He's got the potential. He can blow up some plays. If you were able to see any of the games previously, obviously I know it's kind of tough with. Uh, with the situation we have going on right now to really get into the stadium and watch the game. But Bates is definitely one to keep your eye on because he can make some plays. You can watch him this week and next right here in ICRC. Got that right. Oh, oh there was a tip. And Bates again right there. He made the tag, see? Trying to work his way across the defense. It was number eight. That was huge right there. Cal Toon makes that catch and breaks it. If he's able to get past Bates on that tackle, he's got a lot of green ahead of him. Huge tackle there by Jake Bates to force the fourth down now for Oak Hill. So here we go. So the Highlanders are going to punt. McCormick back just set up just outside his own 46-yard line. So Mason's going to apply some pressure here on this punt block and again it's a sprint they kick and nah, they're gonna that one goes out of bounds at about the 40 Chris you know I know it's the popular thing these days to have these guys take a couple of steps and do the rugby style kick you know what give me a Ray guy give me a guy that drops back catches the snap takes a step and a half and rips it 50 yards this angle kicking you know yeah, I know. I never, I never understood. It. It's now, like you said, it's now the fad in the league here of any 
any style of football right now, that seems to be the, the, the trend. And I'm not going to lie, I'm right there with you. Give me a red guy. Give me a Lee Johnson. <laughs> Lee Johnson, the left footer, inside handoff to McCormick. He's got a gap. He busted inside, and he's good enough for a first down. And we'll get the sticks. We'll get the clock to stop as the sticks have to be advanced for the first down. Where the Commons going to try to get another one in here? Again, watch Nolan McCormick here. Just a very patient runner. He just he lets the hole just you know expand there and hits it like. Perfect. That hole was so big, you and I, arm and arm, oh. could have got through that hole. I'm housing that one with that <laughs> hole right there. I'll tell you what, I am housing that one, and I am going to enjoy every single hour of it. It's how long it would take me to get through it, but we're good to go. Yeah, the comments are marching, but they're going to go ahead and, and come over and reset for the second quarter, flip-flop the field. Folks, stay tuned. We'll be right back to bring you all the action and check out this nice break. Hey, sports fan, did you know the OHSAA is among the national leaders in social media? Check out the OHSAA's social media platforms for news, tournament information, accomplishments, helpful links, and all the items available in the fan guide, including photos, DVDs, and publications. Check out OHSAA Sports on Twitter, Facebook, Snapchat, and Instagram. And who knows, you may be the next featured face. Hello everyone and welcome to ICRC TV Sports. Three pointer, got it! In for the Comet score. Win. Three to Comets win! Yeah! Quarter, we're doing the march. It looks like they're finally getting everything together here. Well, things are slowly starting to get you know, get going for them here and see what they can do. So they're mounting a pretty good drive right now. Molnar in the pistol. McCormick right there in his hip. McCormick takes the inside handoff, lowers his shoulders, carries the pile for about three. That'll set him up for a second down and six. Not much going there for McCormick, but he was able to get something going. That's all you can really ask for. He gained four yards on a run. I mean, you can't, you can't ask for much more than that. So let's see what the Comets do here as they are now close to getting into the red zone. <laughs> From the shifts to the right. Molnar with a quick swing out. Lewis gets a nice block. Does a good job of letting that block develop. Scoops down the sideline inside the 15. Good enough for another Comet first down. 100% this play of success falls on Eli Jordan. Look at this block right there. Knocks the guy completely out of the play. Nothing you can do there. Great job by Eli Jordan to free Kobe Lewis on that play. And Mason now has a first down inside the red zone. Yeah, I, I believe his, his clock was cleaned on that one, folks. <laughs> is Jordan did a great job of, of setting up and just driving that guy. Yeah, great job that, on the quarterback keeper, Molnar. Fakes it to McCormick, a couple of jump, tacklers jump his way. He pulls it out, nice straight up the middle. Good for about a seven yard gainer, so the commentary business here inside the 10. Molnar with a great play there to recognize. It wasn't gonna work with McCormick, he held onto the ball. Found the hole, so, or eight yards later. Mason's continuing to roll here. This is a great drive by the Comets. They have to capitalize here with seven points. Yeah, Molnar, just do, the thing about him is is that they, they've been coaching him up all year to manage the game. Don't try to do too much, manage the game. That time, he manages to get it to Molnar. Look at that, there we go. Steps through a couple of runners and lunges for the end zone. He's gonna be just a, about a half a step shy. Great camera work right there by our crew. Well done. Yeah, all over. To get the view. I love that. 
again, Will McCormick, you, can only, you can't say it enough. Right? He's just very patient, gets the job done when he gets the ball in his hands. So close to a touchdown, hopefully he, for him. He can capitalize here and, uh, oh yeah, he, yeah, he was definitely short, as close as he was. A little jump cut, you know, a little st stop and go. I like the fact that he can get the full speed quick after he makes a cut or a stop. Let's see if they let it pay off for him. Yeah, yeah they rewarded him with it, there you go. Again, he did all the work. Miles will let him get the reward, so the comments now knock this thing up, and they're gonna try to go ahead with the point after. That's, a, that's just a great workmanlike drive there by the Mason Comets. Again, tied this game up. You just see the, the replay here. There was McCormick, there was no there was no other way. He was he wasn't gonna get shut down and stop the end zone there. Michael Ruiz the holder and Michael Timitz is gonna try to kick it. Jackson Hutchinson is gonna be the snapper. Boots it. Boy, That's I tell it. you what, I, I had a little oomph on it. I was gonna, that, man, that was high up on the poles, man. <laughs> I mean, you know. There was a little bit of a little little extra oomph there. That thing would have been good from 70, it seemed like. He, he booted it. Nice big empty on it. There was going to be no doubt that ball was going in. So the comments, again, right that time in. You know, they, they finished the quarter strong. They come out. They grind out close to four and a half here in, in the beginning of the second quarter and more importantly they gave up the lead or they they took the lead where they had been behind let's see what they do here let's let's make sure they execute here on the kickoff yeah see this next drive is key again we talked about the ride the momentum this drive yeah, here mason's defense has had some success in stopping no kills and making a couple plays defensively by applying some pressure. Let's see if they can continue to do that here. If you do, get a stop, you know, with 9.34 left in the quarter or in the half, see what you can do. Ryan Rominski going to kick it off. Oh, and they're going to go with the number, the high bounder. Good job of the comma. So <laughs> rather, than, again. rather than hanging up in the air where they would be kicking into the wind, they went the, the opposite route and sent the saw blade bundling along the ground. Not a bad uh, not a bad strategy as now Oak Hill's gonna get started at about their own 31 with 9.30 to go. Plenty of time to work with here, Chris, but you know, the, the last couple of offensive series haven't looked real smooth for them. You know what I would do if I were Mason? That special teams missile known as Jake Bates, I would let him, uh, let him apply some pressure here, see what they can do. <laughs> Oh, recovery. There we go. That, sir. Caden Evans. <laughs> oh, that was man. a gift. That was a gift. Well, I mean, did did did, <laughs> did, 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 did the uh, runner even get the ball in his stomach? I mean, he did, but, yeah, nice punch out. That was one where, again, here's the here's the replay. I mean, you're not going to get an easier turnover there if you're Jackson or, or Caden Evans. If, <laughs> Probably in your entire career right there. That was right to him. Now, Steve, again, you talk about that ride the momentum. Here we go. I think, I think Joe Reed punched that thing out. Here's the thing. You get a touchdown here on this drive. The old momentum wheels there, yeah. right? Hey, I mean, they're, they're rolling. Oh, and there's an inside shot. And there's your man, Lewis. Oh, I'm sorry, that was the, the guy that threw the big hit before number 11. Eli Jordan, great catch on the slant there and makes him get, get some yak there. The yards after the catch you see here, great slant play. Oh, nice spin move too. Then he's tackled by a host of Highlanders, but not before he picks up a Comet first down. So the clock resets after the first down, 9-12 and going, Comet's looking to cash in again. McCormick shifts to the left. Molnar gives it off to McCormick and then takes off himself. <laughs> Here, there's guys coming. You take it. <laughs> McCormick found the sled tough as he had two defenders right there on him. Pretty sure McCormick would have been uh, 
more thrilled if if Molnar held on to that one as he got absolutely smoked there. But strong inside linebacker Tyler Jones right there. So they were knocked for a two yard loss. That'll set up second and 12. From right at about the 20, inside the 20 yard line, about the 19. Molnar's gonna roll right, roll right, looking, looking, looking. He throws a dart. He, fortunately enough, he threw it out of bounds as Lewis was there, but he was closely guarded. He took a hit there by Nate Ogg after he threw that ball. Molnar, he seems to be feeling it. He did a good job of throwing that ball away, though. There was nobody was gonna get to it, you see here. Yeah, well, Michael Rue was deep, but he was covered as well. So that'll set up a third down. So you see now how the momentum again, like we said, starting to kind of shift back here now. Well, Two negative plays for Mason. That's where here on this third and 11, I make will something happen. Keep an eye out. Kick return to cornerback, Iverson Borders, number 10. He's lining up out here or on, on the short side. Oh, he's got to host the guys. Oh, oh and he overshoots. Third behind Ben Fosnott there. That's a tough one. Yeah, Fosnott, you know, again, if you can get your hands on the sun, you got to pull it in. You know, I mean, again, look, he's got a couple of guys breathing down his neck, and, yeah, that hit him in the wrong spot, right in, right in the gloves. Yeah, right in the gloves, the shoulder pads there. He's just gonna, That's just one where he's got to come down with. He knows that, and then obviously the, the coaching staff's going to, they'll probably reinforce he's those. He's a sophomore. You know, <laughs> it's kids. It's, it's still Friday night, folks. It's, uh, oh, so they're going to go for a field goal here. Is uh, time it's in there? It's going to be R from about 35 out. Rue with the hold, and there's a worm burner. Now, did that get tipped at the line? Maybe we could see that on a. Yeah, because that, that, that wasn't pretty. Here. I don't think that's how he planned it. Yeah, and I, it, maybe the hole didn't get down clean, but, you know, again, that. Let's see here. It might have been tipped there by number 10, but it doesn't. He might have just, uh, just didn't come off the foot right. Oak Hills with a good job on the defensive stand and going ahead and, and you know, stopping that, that field goal conversion. So they get the rock back. Now they're at their own 20. And let's see what they can do is Holt lines up into the shotgun, inside handoff into a pack of wild counts. It's not what you want to see if you're a running back. That was quite the... Like the pack of green there. Yeah, was, you know, led by the probably the biggest guy out there in that pack, <laughs> Big Joe Reed. Yeah, it's a big boy. You know, if, you know, if you run into him, you're not gonna you're not gonna get very far. <laughs> and then Caden Evans there to help him clean it up. That's gonna be second and eleven. Hold back, back, back. Does a good job of throwing it across the middle and again, hits the receiver in the wrong spot, right in the hand. Jacob Day, he seemed like he was running before. I was going to say because you know if you look here, he had some green because he's able to split those defenders in the secondary. He just he he saw it. I mean, he very well could have seen Jackson Hutchinson coming up to uh, to lay the boomstick there as well. But hey, again, another sophomore. You know, again, it's going to happen. I, I I mean, yeah, it's well, part of the game. Yeah, I know. But I tell you what, Saturday morning film is not going to be happy. <laughs> and, of course, if you got a mom that knows football, she's going to get all over. You're a sophomore. You're playing most of <laughs> Catch the ball. <laughs> and I'm talking about a couple of moms after, after what we've seen in the last few plays. Good job of the Comets of forcing a no-gainer there. So... Oak Hills is going to have to drop back a punt. Now the Comets might get some decent field position here. Is the because they've done a good job of applying some pressure on these punts, and therefore they have not given 
Oak Hill's really much time to, to get off a decent punt, see if mm -hmm. it happens again. Oh. Oh, and that time he gets off a dandy. As McCormick goes back and watches that saw blade, picks it up. He had called for the fair catch there. Well, I guess nobody saw it. See, he had called for the fair catch as he was running back, so that's that should automatically. Well, but I mean, you have to you have to have your shoulders square and typically raise it. If he turned his back and, and was throwing his well, hand out, that's not. That you're you're correct on that one. He was he was turned to the side there. Yeah, I think the, the referees are going to talk about it, the officials are going to talk about it, but it wasn't clear because, again, his hand's going up. Now, is he trying to block the lights out of his eyes, trying to see that thing? Again, yeah, he, he, he was says, waving. He gave himself up as well, which is kind of, you know, that's tough. But, again. Well, I mean, if it was a fair catch, they would have blown the whistle and, and the official would have stepped in the middle. Exactly. And what do they say? Play till you hear the whistle. Well, that's it, where it, you get that. I mean, if he takes off and they blow it dead, then they blow it dead. Exactly. You know, that's kind of how you got to look at it. But that's, that's one of the the first things you teach him when you're teaching him football is play until you hear the whistle blow. You've got that right. Number two is you would much rather be the hitter than the hitee. <laughs> that is, that's <laughs> correct as well. <laughs> so they're going to get some type of a crazy call on here, but they're going to send him back. Maybe they're going to give him the fair catch, but he's they're going to mark it back there at about the 11. Now, there was a flag. I saw the official doing something, but I didn't see exactly what it was. Okay, so they're going to set up right outside. We'll call it the 11-yard line where the Comets take over. They got 624 to work with. Molnar gets well. hog collared and thrown down he did have a seam to run to but then that guy just caught him high and just drug him back and you're gonna get dinged for a hold here just gonna continue to march backwards on that run there by McCormick you again like you said I'm only gonna oh, go defensive, defensive holding. holding that's something you don't see every day yeah, defensive holding on a run like let's, that let's see if you see it down here Clearly. Yeah, I didn't see any of it. Yeah, so it was. That was kind of it was just a mess of bodies there. It's, that's why they pay the officials the big bucks on that one. That's to see that I can't. All right, so the comments then the beneficiaries of a defensive holding call that'll move the, the ball all the way out. Just shy of the 25 yard line. Still plenty of time to go to mount up a decent drive here with 6.17 to go. Which that was a big positive play in terms of, you know, you, you got the. See, I was going return to that point after this play. Molnar keeps it himself this time. Knife through a couple of tacklers. Leans forward above the 31 yard line. Good enough for about a seven yard game. That's good game management. He's now doing, doing what's possible. Exactly. You don't need a quarterback to go out there and be a gunslinger firing it around and, you know, making some mistakes like a la a Jay Cutler. I just want a quarterback to get the job done and play the game smart. Don't turn the ball over, which he did do the interception earlier. But, again, that's going to happen. You're not going to go a full season without throwing a pick. But it's how you rebound from that, and Michael Molnar has done a phenomenal job of rebounding after that turnover. Yeah, that time pulling it out and taking it himself, given what the defense is giving him. There's a quick flip out. There's your block again as Lewis leans forward here, pick up about two. Looked like he might have got tripped up there on Eli Jordan. Yeah, they, they were trying to run that same play again where Jordan, you know, basically just. It's kind of like a bubble screen. It's kind of what it looked. It was kind of what it played out. Yeah, he just, yeah, he ended up bobbling it and he just he couldn't get around him. So well, Jordan's out there basically to say, okay, we're. You and I are out here with two guys. I'm going to erase one. You outrun <laughs> the other one. It's worked so far yeah. outside of that play. but So under center this time, Molnar, McCormick. The up man gets it. And the up man does a great job. Caden Evans a thundering down to midfield. Good enough for another Comet first down. That is how you handle a third and short there. Caden Evans. 
quick handoff there by Molnar, and Evans just just gonna bust through it. I mean, there's you know great job there, capitalized on that first down. Nothing fancy, man. Just keep the pads squared in the line of scrimmage and go get those yards. It's gonna punch you in the mouth in the trench there, and 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 push forward. And that's what they're doing. Molnar keeps it himself again. Again, the right read as he leans forward inside the 35-yard line. That's an experienced play there by Michael Molnar. Read the defense, perfect. Took it right from McCormick, kept the ball. Well, Rumbles for a first down. And watch down. this, he freezes the defensive end and the inside linebacker by faking it to McCormick. And so they're both leaning McCormick's way and he just nice right underneath. That's a nice stiff arm and a nice move too. That could not have been executed any better there by the Comets offense all around. Great job there. 4-10 and counting. So Molnar. Oh, tried to get it inside. That was a, a well-conceived play. Just, you know, again, hitting these guys in the wrong spot, right in the hands. Yeah, the wor worst place possible there. I mean, that's one where Eli Jordan obviously has to come down with that and make that catch. It was right there to him. Look at that. Again, Eli's running before he gets the ball. And, and if you see that, you let the ball get into his body. You know, The idea is to get your hands out in front of you and pull that thing in. So that's a second and 10 from just inside the 35. Molnar keeps it himself. He had a gap, but a nice job of closing that thing down by the defender. I believe that was one of the inside linebackers, number 48. It's actually Tyler Jones. It's like an inside linebacker there, a senior, six foot, 187. He was not going to be outdone there by Michael Molnar. Did a great job of bringing him down. You know, he just felt Molnar having that thing, keep it in himself and just... He did have a gap, a great job of pursuit and wrapping him up. Third and about six. It's a big third down here for Mason now. You get a first down, you keep marching, you hold him. Molnar, oh, oh and he uh -oh. gets drilled. Oh, nice job of pulling that thing out wow. of the air. Wow, Woo. what a job. Michael, Michael Rue went and got that ball and then he paid for it at the end, he got drilled. But that, that play is going to be good enough for a Comet first down. <laughs> that's exactly how, watch, that's exactly how they drew it up. Wow, impressive job there by Tyler Jones to blow right through the line. Hit Molnar as the, on the throw. I mean, he was just unblocked, came up. Michael Rue, huge play there. I mean, that's, wow, good, again. Good job catching a tip pass, but even a better job of getting upfield and getting the first down yardage. Exactly how they drew it up, like I said. Now McCormick gets the ball and he pounds it outside and he goes crashing inside the 15 yard line close to the 10. Good enough for another Comet first down. Great job again by Nolan McCormick. He has been the man tonight for the Comets. Another great run. Again, lets the play develop in front of him. It's a hole, and he's just, he's just not going to be taken down. He will not give up. They've used him as a decoy on about the last three or four that time. They let him run the rock because that's what he gets paid for. Man. You got that right. McCormick tries to shake off a tackler. He almost drug the guy with him across the end zone, uh, across the goal line, but good job of hanging on and knocking him down by number four. Just when things were starting to get a little sketchy on that point there, he still gains a yard out of it. And that's that's what you want to see from your from your top running back. And again, one of the best running backs in the league here. It's Matthew Fulton on the tackle for Oak Hills High. Now we've got the power backfield, power eye. Oh, man takes it. And Touchdown. boom! Caden Evans. Caden Evans. With a great job. And again, when you see that line up, you always think that Evans is going to be leading McCormick in there. And how about Darren Little for throwing <laughs> a, 
offensive coordinator for throwing that that one little slide in there. You know, I got a hungry linebacker who used to probably, who probably at one time in his career played fullback, and he volunteered probably as a senior to play a little fullback, and there he goes, man. So let me have the rock a couple times there, Coach. I'm sorry, he's just a junior, Evans is. Again, the kick up is good, so that puts the Comets up by at least one score and a two two point conversion. But more importantly is they take a commanding not a commanding lead, but they get to where they thought they were gonna be at one forty three to go here in the first half. You know the thing is it kind of feels like it should be a little more the way the game's gone, because it's 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 not as you know, the score's not gonna reflect the, the kind of play that we've seen so far in this game. The last couple drives Mason's shown what they can do. And it's gonna be we're gonna win that we're gonna win this game in the trenches. And we've seen it so far between McCormick, Molnar, and then obviously throw Caden Evans well, and, in there. And, I mean, hey. And you and you you called it early. You said the game of momentum and the Lions were in the one in the trenches. Paul Rodriguez, Jack and Petroselli, Skylar Horn, Nolan Ekafee, and Matt Belo, you guys are winning the war up Ooh. front. Those are the guys. They're getting it done. Flat out getting it done for. And nothing flashy here, Chris. Nothing flashy. What's going on is they're just playing their game. And that's okay. all you have to do. The only time they tried to get flashy is they got picked up. So they went back to basic football. And on the skimmer kick, O'Kills returns it up to about the 32-yard line where they'll have a minute 38 to work. You continue to do what got you there. That's how you do it. And that's what Mason's done now. Nice defensive stand here with a minute 38 to go. You go in the locker room up. Yeah, let's let's see. That's what you're asking, right? That's what any coach is going to want. Exactly. Let's see, you know, again. Uh, full complement of timeouts for both squads. So a minute 38 could take a while, especially if they start throwing the ball around. So let's see what happens here. Well, they're spreading them out, so I'd have to think that Oak Hills is going to try and attack it here. Well, I mean, Holt's a pretty good passer. We just haven't seen much of his pass in this game. And now he's going to be thrown oh. into the wind, and he's going to be working from five yards deeper because <laughs> somebody else is trying to get a quick start. That right there is not what you want to do. And now here's the thing now. How does Oak Hills, how do they approach this? First and 15 now, you're you're got a little longer than what you would have had before. Do you still approach it in terms of trying to maybe air it out per se, or do you play conservative? Well, I, However, if you run the ball, I mean, again, Mason's got their complement of, time, complement of timeouts. And that was a senior. That was a senior that went off sides there, Logan Heeman. Yeah, you can't so, you can't do that. It looks like O'Kills, they're just going to continue to go with what they uh, watch a draw play here, though, if they're not going to do it. There we go. Oh, what a nice job. And there's the guy that jumped off sides, Heeman, who's still running, still running. He's finally knocked down at about the 33-yard line of the Comets. Well, I think that answered our question on how they're going to approach this drive. Yeah, and the nice thing is is that they don't have to burn very many timeouts here. Now that they picked up this chunk of yards, Chris, now, again, they got the three timeouts. They didn't have to burn any before. So now they got the full complement of their offensive playbook. Now that they're inside the 35. It's gonna Holt, be there's a hole there. Rolling right. No, I didn't call it. Rolling right. Oh man, did he hang on to that thing or did he get rid of it? I, I don't know. If I he, couldn't tell. I couldn't see him throw yeah, the ball away. Yeah, he hung on to it and he paid dearly for it. <laughs> Dear, my ribs hurt after that hit. <laughs> Because, you know, when you when you pump fake and then the guy throws both his hands into your chest, I think I lost my breath for a few <laughs> seconds with a minute and eight to go here if we got that on instant replay. He was just trying to stretch the defense down, look for a gap, and it just kept drawing wide. Great pursuit by the Comets as they'll pick it up here with second and 12. See, that's a mistake there by the senior quarterback. Sometimes you just you throw it away and live another day instead of getting you know smoked out of bounds. Now he's looking deep in the corner. Oh, good job by the comments on the defense. But hey, son, uh, number four, knock that thing down. Don't be trying to catch it. You almost tipped it into the defender's hands. Roper did a good job of getting down there in between the defenders for Oak Hills. 
That was Iris and Borders on that one. It was a great job to recover there and make that play defensively. Now an inside handoff. They're going to call timeout. Mason looks like they're going to rush Kastner. Coach Kastner is going to get that stopped. It looks like that's what he's doing. If, yeah, the ball's going to be stopped there. Because now you got a fourth down here. Now what do you do if you're Oak Hills? 55.1 left. You haven't really mounted anything until you, when, and since you got that score in the first quarter. And Coach Kastner is going to take the timeout. Honestly, I think in this case you just maybe kind of pooch punt in here just to try and pin Mason back as far as possible. Because here's the thing. You mess it up here, you get a turnover on downs. Mason's going to have the ball anywhere, you know, 30 or 40 yard line around there. And if you're able to pooch it down or even, you know, even if you get a touchback, you're still gaining some yards there, some dead yards. Well, and Mason, then, just forcing Mason to go a little longer than what they would have to again yeah, if they try and, to go for it. Again, the Comets just burn a timeout, so they're going to be one down. So they were looking, they were looking to force that hand. Yeah. Yeah, here are the couple big plays here on this drive, and that first one it was a beautiful pitch and catch there by Oak Hills. The key there, Chris, though, is then then they got in and that opened up the whole playbook. Exactly. Once you get yourself in that position there. Again, like you said, you open up the playbook there. You're able to do a lot more as opposed to starting the starting the drive back at the 30-yard line and have to go 70 yards. You gain a pretty good chunk of change there. Again, you put yourself in a much better spot, and now it's going to be interesting to see how Oak Hills is going to approach this one. Well, you know, again, they might line their quarterback up, put it. I'm thinking they're probably going to put him in the shotgun and let him do a quick kick. Exactly. That's exactly what I was thinking. I would, I would be surprised if they did anything different. But they do got trips left. I mean, twins left, twins right. Oh, they're going to fully go for it. Oh, good job of running off the defender. Fantastic up play. Right at the first down marker. Logan Heyman with a phenomenal route there just a yard past the just a yard past the stick turn boom pitch and catch first down and that took less than five seconds off the clock nice job it just uh, just planting that toe making that cut he had the defender with his shoulders turned back and that was so iris and borders who was he was he was expecting him to go deep and he just cut that cut that route off in a split second there Now he's going to pull it down himself, go down the middle, and get drilled as he's down, knocked down about the 16-yard line, Devin Holt. Jackson Orlando delivering the blow, and Oak Hill's going to go ahead and take one of their timeouts now. they still got two left after this one, and again, plenty of time to work with, Chris. But So we've seen, we've seen some throws, and we've seen the, the fact that that Holt can do a pretty decent job throwing when he gets time. I'll tell you one thing, Steve. This is this is definitely a different Oak Hills than what we've seen in the past. New coach, new attitude. You can see. I think in the past this game would have been over. And I'm not just saying that you know to bash Oak Hills there, but you know they are coming back with some with some vengeance on this drive. Again, you make a big play there to start it off, and then you just continue to roll on fourth down in a position. That we, like you said, you turn that ball over, you're giving Mason a huge opportunity. Well, yeah, because the Comets do come out and get the ball starting in the second quarter. But Brian Castor in our in our production meeting today, the notes that he turned into our producers talked a little bit about how that the new head coach at Oak Hills has their team playing fast and with a lot of confidence. So, and you can see that with a lot of the seniors, is that you know they put in their time. They're ready to turn things around over there in Highlander country. Holt pulls it down again. Oh, oh man. There's a big shot. Caden Evans, not only does he score touchdowns, he will take your head off if you try to. I bet. I think the clock was cleaned for Mr. It, Holt it, as the it clock was. continues to run. 
surprised they didn't try to burn the time out there. Yeah, so he just w wings it out to the side there, sort of like a, a grounding call, if you will. That's going to leave it at fourth and four. And what are they going to do? Are they going to come in with a... And you got a timeout. You might as well use it, Coach. And they are going nope. to... No, I was going to say they are going to go for the field goal here. Maybe. I don't think they realize some confusion out here. Okay. Well, they got, you got to bring the kicker out. And she, she brings out her, her kicking plate. So let's see if Kelly gets a, a shot now. This is going to be about a 33-yarder. Snaps down. Oh. oh, no. It's bobbled. And there's your boy Borders. Right on top of it. Good job. As again, wow. snap was good. The holder just couldn't get it down, couldn't get a handle on it. That's big for the Condors to stop him without scoring here. I tell you what, that play went sideways <laughs> really quick. You see, he just bobbled the snap. And that was Kyle Toon, the holder there, the sophomore holder. Just bobbled, he tried to get it down really quick. And unfortunately yeah. for him, could not. And then the play went sideways. Now, but again, that's another one of those where you look at him in the films and you go, <laughs> you know? Yeah, Coach might single you out on that I, one. I do that a thousand <laughs> times, and this time I take my mind off of it. Okay, so Molnar with McCormick right next to him. McCormick's just going to grind it up to the middle. and they are content with that, with that lead. Yeah, with that, the clock's going to run out. So the score, oh, no. Comet's going to take a timeout. Oh, so they're going to they put 2.5 back on the clock. I don't know why. Yeah, you know, you yeah. never know what can happen. No, that's true. They seem pretty content to just let it go. So, I was Well, I, you know, I, Nolan McCormick is liable to bust one inside j just as well as anybody else. So, again, give the offense one more play. Let's see if we can pad the stats here going to have a lot of momentum going coming back into the second half. You looking at any scores out there, buddy? Or? I am not. You want me to? Yeah. I, I can give people a heads up on what's going on. You mean? Yeah, let's see what's going on in the GMC if, if you've got if you've got an idea or if the truck's got any ideas, you can whistle them here in our ears. The Comets here lead to 14 to 6. They're going to have one more play. Chris and I will do our research. We'll give you some <laughs> scores when we get Yeah, we'll back. come back full blown, ready to ready to rock and roll here. Molnar just going to try to run out the clock as he does. He takes a couple yard loss, but not a bad move for the Comets. So, from Dwyer Field Atrium Stadium, our score here at halftime here in this Friday night football GMC Greater. Miami Conference battle. The Mason Comets lead the Oak Hill Highlanders 14 to six. Folks, grab a cool beverage, kick back, relax, watch a couple of our public service announcements, and Chris and I will be back to bring you all the action right here on ICRC Sports. Friday Night Football will be back. The year was 1907. The Cubs won the World Series and the Ford Model R hit the assembly line. While here in Ohio, school administrators came together to form the Ohio High School Athletic Association. One thing that hasn't changed since 1907 is the dedication of the OHSAA to education-based athletics in Ohio. School sports teach responsibility, sportsmanship, and life lessons that stay with students long after their playing days are over. The OHSAA seeks to prepare students not for the next level of sport, but for the next level of life. Hey, let's check out this park. Oh, wow, that's 
it's really cool. <laughs> to find a great local park or forest near you, go to discovertheforest.org. 100 years ago, the League of Women Voters was founded by suffragists who believed in the power of women to create a more perfect democracy. Throughout the last century, we've never stopped moving towards a future where every person in our country is empowered to play a critical role in shaping our democracy. Today, LWV activists throughout the United States are working to expand voting rights, ensure fair representation in government, and push for a more equitable and just political system. This progress is in our DNA, just as our founders did 100 years ago. Today, our activists are shaping the future of voting rights in America. See how their story could be yours. What do you think you're doing, Kevin? I uh, was just gonna drive home. Uh, 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 there are several warning signs present that you shouldn't be driving. Like hearing voices? Like your text to emoji ratio? Oh man, the selfies. <laughs> Selfie nailed it. We all have warning signs that let us know that we're probably not okay to drive. Mine is pretending to be your subconscious. Craig, come on man, let's put a ride home. I mean, I don't totally know what opioids are, but... It doesn't happen here. Not in denial. No. No. Our kids are way too busy. My son is good friends. Don't live in denial, Ohio. Talk to your kids about drugs, and they'll be up to 50% less likely to use them. I just wanted to play. I just want to play. I just want to play. I just want to play. 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 Along the way, I'm learning sportsmanship, sportsmanship, teamwork, teamwork, how to work hard, how to work hard, discipline, hustle, sacrifice, how to be a leader, dedication. I just want to play. And along the way, I'm learning to put the team before myself, to put the team before myself, how to be a student, how to be a student. I'm learning to set a good example. How to work hard. To accept responsibility. That I represent my community. That I represent my community. I just wanted to play and look where it took me. She's done it. Tiana Bartoleva has done it. From Elyria, Ohio, now an Olympic gold medalist. save homes and restore pride. We are people working cooperatively. Our typical client earns less than $14,000 annually and cannot afford the critical repairs they need to safely live at home, where they desperately want to be. Our services truly change lives, one repair at a time. Our professionally trained staff, along with 25,000 volunteer hours annually, has provided more than 280,000 services for low-income, elderly, and disabled homeowners in our communities. Every service makes an impact. Homes we service have an increased sales price of 10%, and even the value of surrounding homes increase upwards of 3%. Our energy conservation services save clients an average of $300 a year. These total savings from all customers equals over $200,000 in outstanding energy bills paid. With safer living environments, almost 50% of our clients reported improved health, and many are seeking medical attention less frequently. By living healthy at home, 
Over $54,000 in state and federal funds can be saved annually for each client that does not need to move to assisted living. PwC's impact is more than just dollars and cents. Stable homes create stable families, which means children who are moving less frequently can achieve higher academic success. We are an investment in the future. More people living safely in their own home paints a brighter future for everyone, but we can't do it alone. We need your help to continue to build a brighter future for the entire community. Give back and get involved at pwchomerepairs.org. When you vote, something powerful happens to your voice. Your single ballot becomes a megaphone. You stand out and tell your community and our nation what you want for our future. Vote411.org is your tool for accurate and unbiased election information on the issues that affect you and the people you care about. Through Vote411, you can register to vote using our online form that only takes a few minutes to complete, available in multiple languages. Check your registration status and find out where to vote right on the Vote411 homepage and get important up-to-the-minute information on the elections happening in your state and local community through the Vote411 interactive map. Your voice is strong and important. It is a critical part of our democracy. Vote411.org is your tool for all the election information you need. Get online, get the facts, and make your voice heard on Election Day. Powered by the League of Women Voters Education Fund. What to expect when you're expecting a teenager. Today we're talking about how to wake up your teen, and this works literally every time. You heard how loud I know, I heard, I heard. It wasn't you. Yeah. It was me. Is that bacon? You don't have to know it all to be a perfect parent. Thousands of teens in foster care will love you just the same. Get it. You'll get it. Get it. Get it. <laughs> when you bring home a Goodwill find, you give your whole town a reason to celebrate because you're also funding local job training and placement programs in tech, healthcare, and more. Goodwill. Bring good home. It's a beautiful day out here, sunny today with light breezes, giving way to clouds in the afternoon. We could see some light precipitation to moderate precipitation later on, followed by powerful storm-like conditions. 90 miles per hour winds are expected. Authorities are asking everyone, stay indoors. Come on, that's it. Let's go. Things we do or say can make others feel hurt, excluded, or isolated. Everything you say and do creates an impact. How am I supposed to save the whole world? You can't think about saving the world. You have to think about saving one person. Because of you, someone's entire life can change. You don't have to be a superhero to have a positive impact. Friends? Friends. You think you're probably sober? Yeah. But you're thinking about taking the back roads home, just in case. If you're probably sober, then why would you do that?
Good choice. Probably okay isn't okay. If you see a warning sign, stop and call a cab, a car, or a friend. That's a full glass of wine. I'll be chatting you later. I just wanted to play. I just want to play. I just want to play. I just want to play. 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 Along the way, I'm learning. Sportsmanship. Sportsmanship. Teamwork. Teamwork. How to work hard. How to work hard. Discipline. Hustle. Sacrifice. How to be a leader. Dedication. I just want to play. And along the way, I'm learning to put the team before myself. To put the team before myself. How to be a student. How to be a student. I'm learning to set a good example. How to work hard. To accept responsibility. That I represent my community. That I represent my community. I just wanted to play and look where it took me. She's done it. Tiana Bartoleva has done it. From Elyria, Ohio, now an Olympic gold medalist. Hello, everyone, and welcome to ICRT TV Sports. Three-pointer. Got it. In for the Comet score. Three to Comet win. Welcome back, everyone, to Dwyer Field at Atrium Stadium, where the Comets here on Friday Night Football. The Mason Comets lead the Oak Hills Highlanders 14 to 6. Steve Parker and Chris Asprock and Chris, we talked about it at the beginning of the game. You said the three keys of the games. I think the Comets are a little bit ahead on those, don't you think? I think so. I think they're they're taking advantage of the of the keys of the game, like I had said originally win the game of the trenches they've done that so far you can see by the just by the way the the drives have gone especially when the ball is on the ground mason's done a great job pounding the rock win the turnover battle now they're not winning that one it's tied one one but still mason still has taken advantage of each team has actually taken advantage of each turnover and, and the third one and got points and yeah. got points yeah exactly and the third one is ride the waves of momentum. And that's so far Mason has done the better job of that as they are now up 14 to six. But Oak Hills did a better job of that early on in this game and made things really difficult for the Comets, so. Yeah, and it's always dangerous to let somebody, a team that hasn't had a lot of success in the last few years, come into your house, get up on you early because you never know what's gonna happen. But the Comets, fortunately enough, are gonna be getting the ball here in the second half, looking to uh, keep that momentum that they had going. And they're gonna go with the bounding kick too. Picked up by one of the up men. Caden Evans, you think you'd learn by now. He doesn't mess around. And Evans is See? still golden, going, and like you said before, coach, Play until the whistle blows. That's what you got to do. Caden Evans again. That kid, he doesn't, he does not mess around. He's going to play until that final whistle. Yeah, he did so, a great job on the return as the up man there. Yeah, they thought he was going to be down in about the 30, and next thing you know, he's squirting out of the pile and he gets above the 40 yard line. So, Comets with great starting field position here. Here's the situation now. Shorter field to work with. March down the field, get a touchdown. You can go up 21 to six here. No, no. Back. Keeps it himself again. Runs into a couple of trucks as he leans forward. Picks up two, maybe three. Again, Molnar did a great job there. Pulling the ball out of McCormick's bread basket there and kept it. Yeah, if we can see this on the replay, I mean, You'll, you'll see why he, he wanted to keep that. His re, Paul Rodriguez just literally just wiped the ground with the guy that was across from him, number 78. Paul Rodriguez again. He's a big boy. He's going to make you feel it, punish you. 
Inside handoff. McCormick's going to take it along the edge. He bounces around for about two, so that'll set up a manageable third and about a long three. We'll call it four here for the Comets as the clock continues to run here in the third quarter. We're under 10.50 to go. Nate Ogg with a great job with the penetration there to bring down McCormick. So far, the first couple plays, Oak Hills has done a good job in the trenches. Again, where that game's going to be won, they've done a much, much, much better job of handling the situation here and keeping Mason at bay and now forcing them to a third and, third and very manageable. Comets with two receivers to the left, one to the right. Keeping himself as Molnar, and he leans forward, and he's going to get enough for the first down. I mean, as a Mason fan, you have to be just ecstatic seeing what Michael Molnar can do. And again, he's only a junior. No, we got a, a Highlander down. As Tyler Jones. That does not look good. It's the way that he's bent over. Okay, now he rolls back. He looks like some type of lower extremity injury. Yeah, while he's down, we'll kick it over to these important messages. We'll be right back. Hey, sports fan. Did you know the OHSAA is among the national leaders in social media? Check out the OHSAA's social media platforms for news, tournament information, accomplishments, helpful links, and all the items available in the fan guide, including photos, DVDs, and publications. Check out OHSAA Sports on Twitter, Facebook, Snapchat, and Instagram. And who knows, you may be the next featured face. Hello everyone and welcome to ICRC TV Sports. Three pointer, got it! In for the Comet score. Win. Back to the live action. Michael Molnar on first down. Looking for a receiver. Pulls it down. He's got some running room. He gets across the 45 inside the 45. And he's rustled out of bounds at about the 43 yard line. Good for about a four yard gainer. And Chris, what I like that time is, is when he got outside. He didn't force the ball. He took what the defense gave him and got out of bounds. Again, we have seen Michael Molnar tonight play well above his age. When I say that, I mean he's first year star. Yeah, I, I mean he, he seems like he's he's been under center here in this offense for for years, and that's that's what you want to see as a coach. He's a quarterback doing a great job of managing this football game. Inside handoff and scrappy number twenty-one. Bates. Guy. That's my boy Bates there. Again, done a great job so far today on both sides of the ball. Mason, they just they continue to roll out running backs that just flat out get the job done. It's been year after year after year, and this is another situation here. We can go McCormick, and then roll out Evans, and then now Bates. Third and a big two. Taking it himself is Molnar, and again he leads it <coughs> inside the 35 yard line. Good enough for another Comet first down. Great job of managing the game by Michael Molnar. Molnar was not going to be denied on that play. As you can see, he was just, he lowered his shoulder. He saw, he saw where the first down marker was, and he was just not going to be denied. He was going to make sure he got that first down. Didn't force anything, but he was just going to out-physical you in terms of that play there, and that's exactly what Molnar did. Folks, Again, playing well above his age here. I, uh, I want the folks to notice something here at the end of the game, just another precaution for the times that we're in. I'll talk about it here after this snap as Michael Molnar. An inside handoff, McCormick lowers his pads and pushes the pile across the 30-yard line down to about the 20. Let's see where they're going to mark him, about the 28. But folks, if you'll, if, 
And, and Truck, let's get our camera out there. If you look right in front of the defense, where the referee's standing right now, is he's the referee's putting a marker out there. So the offense basically keeps the ball. The ball goes back to the center, and the center takes it, and he goes ahead and he spots it so that there's not a lot of handling of the ball. It stays with the ball carrier, stays with the quarterback, and then after the play, it goes back to the center. So that's something pretty unique for the times that we're in. McCormick pushing the pile again, looking to get close to first down yardage. He's going to be just a bit shy as he's knocked down about the 25, about a half yard shy, set up third and a short one for the Comets. What I like about this drive, Steve, is the fact that this is a drive that Mason is going out there and saying, you stop us. I mean, it's everything has been on the ground. We're just going to punch you in the mouth win this game in the trenches, which is, again, one of our keys to the game, and that's what Mason's doing here. Gobbling up that clock, too. Doing a great job of that. All by himself, leaning forward on the keeper is Michael Mona. Picked up about two or three. Good enough for another Comet first down. That clock keeps running. This drive has taken well over half of the quarter already. And they are just continuing to punish Oak Hills right from the line of scrimmage, which again, Mason, we knew offensively they were a superior offense compared to Oak Hills' defense. That's, you know, we've seen that so far this season. And they're now starting to show that. Oh, Molnar does a great job of pulling it down and taking what the defense gives him. Gets knocked down at about the 20-yard line, but again, it wasn't there. What I like is he pulled it down. He didn't force the ball. One thing that to watch right there was Molnar was flexing his arm a little bit. That's something to watch. He, he's kind of shooting. He, you can see he's working that arm. That's that could be a problem here. Let's see what... They're focusing there, and that, that could be something major to watch here, Steve. That's for Mason. You definitely don't want anything to happen to Molnar right now. Clock continues to run. We're under 5:30 and counting. Molnar, McCormick inside the five gets knocked down inside about the three-yard line. They're going to mark him right at about the three. Well, now they're going to move it to the two. They just kept moving forward there. One thing I was going to say, Steve, is you can see, like, with, with Molnar really working that arm, it's to the point now, just let your running backs keep handing, them, keep handing off the rock and let them just keep pounding it. That's what – don't let your quarterback take any more hits because you're going to need them these next three games. Inside, McCormick. Touchdown, he's in. Yeah, he gets, he gets the glory because he did all the work. Hey, and let's face it, Michael Molinar did a whole group that time, too. So the Comets put their 20th point on the board. They're looking to add number 21. This was a drive that took six minutes and 59 seconds, and Mason drives it right down the field, chews up, like I said, well over half that clock. I mean, if you're Coach Cashman, you got to be just tickled pink after that. That is, that's the kind of drive that you want right there to really put a team away yeah. early in this half. Momentum, battle in the trenches, you know, all the stuff that, that you indicated early, Chris, is the keys to the game. Hang on to the rock, win the battle up front in the trenches, and, uh, you know, execute when, it, when it's time to score. Great job. Well, again, this is how you help ride that momentum. Because it's nothing's more demoralizing for a for defense knowing that when you line up, you're going to get punched in the mouth and most likely not be able to stop it. Just the clock continues to run. That you know they continue to reset those chains. That's that's demoralizing for defense, and that's one thing that Mason has really done. You know, over those last couple of runs, was they were going to make you feel it as they were pushing forward, and now they got that huge score now up by 15 points here. 5.01 to go here in the third quarter, and that that 
as you said, Chris, that whole drive consumed everything from the beginning of the second half to where we are now. Rominski squared up for the kickoff. Let's see if they're going to go with a deep kick or, yeah, this time he puts a, a hard one. I believe it's Lehman looking for a gap. He finds a gap. He's oh, got man. a seam and he's finally knocked down, but that was a great run. That was a great, great run there. Yeah, Lehman just, you know, what he did is, is he actually found that seam and then just put his head down and just. You know, again, nice wall of blocking. So, Oak Hills trying to stir things up here as they're going to take over and start this drive at their own 45. Holt under center. He's going to drop back. Oh, man. In the end. Oh, look at that. Revert. So he rolls left and, and throws back right. That's a nice little opposite waggle pass, you want to call it. He, he rolled one way and threw back the other way. It was just like a little half roll. That's a nice design play as the number 22 got downfield and got wide open. And so they're across into Comet territory now. And that was a tough play there, first play. Great play call there by Oak Hills. Hope pulls it down, runs inside. He's got all kinds of room. Oh. He gets punished there by yeah. Jackson Hutchison. Yeah, it takes a nice shot there. He was going to make him feel that one. And Devin Holt certainly did. Now this is one heck of a response here by the Highlanders. They, yeah. you know, they could have easily rolled over and said, all right, you know, we did a good job for a half. They are not giving up here. They are bound and determined to make this a game here and they're doing a great job of it. It's up to Mason's defense now to step back up and take, take back that momentum. Snap on the ground. Oh, and the ball's on the right ground there. again. Let's see. Mason's got it. And that right there is how you step up and snatch that momentum right back. Well, number 86 for the comments came up with the ball. That is Bryce Falk, the defensive lineman. The 6'1", 203 pound sophomore D lineman there with a huge recovery. Yeah, that was big. That was really big. And, then, and again, you'll see it here. It all started with Holt not getting the snap clean. He had to go down and get it. Looks like he didn't have a good handle on it. Tried to just flip it out there, or at least stuff it in there. He probably stuck an edge inside that young man's ribs, number 22, Steve Watson. And Watson didn't didn't ever have the handle on it because it, it everybody started scrambling on the ground. Because here's the thing, once a, once that play started, that ball hit the ground, everything is just, everything. all your timing's all messed up for everything. So it really becomes a free-for-all. And we saw exactly what happened, like you said, yeah, it was just it was pure it was just pure chaos yeah, from I mean, Holt trying to get it to the running backs got a stutter step. Again, the quarterback's got a rush to get it to him. Maybe he sticks it in, he sticks the point into his rib, and he can't get a grip, clean grab on it. But nice job by the comments. Again, forcing the issue at the line of scrimmage when the interior lineman came up with the ball. So big turnover here with 416 to go here in the third quarter. Let's see if the comments can can capitalize here. And one thing you can expect is this drive to take the remainder of this quarter, because I got a feeling it's gonna be the same situation. Three yards in a cloud of dust. That's how you do it. And look at McCormick right there. Ooh. Yeah, he stepped through a couple of tackles, gets across the 30 yard line, finally drug down at about the 32, 33. And like you said, Chris, no reason to put the ball in the air. The clock is your friend right now. You're at home. You got a, a pretty decent lead against a, a team that's, that's really hungry and looking for looking for an opportunity to, to try to grab a win. But again, just 
demoralize them here, beat them up front, grind this thing out. The thing is, Oak Hills is not a team that looks like they're 0-2. No they're way. a team that's definitely on the rise, and they're going to be one to watch here in the GMC over the next couple of years. But here's the you don't want to give them any hope to come out and, and get a victory here. Kobe Lewis is out there on that swing pass. Not so sure I agree with that type of call at this time of the game. I mean, why would you just throw something wide towards the uh, your opponent's bench? Yeah, I don't, I don't know about that one. Yeah, I wouldn't go far side. Again, just continue to to run the ball. I, I mean, that's got you this far. I mean, if you want to get cute, if you want to get something on the outside, if you want to get work with your guys on the outside, let's go ahead and run a jet sweep for them. Send them in motion or run a reverse or something. But putting the ball in the air on that side of the field, not a, not a good thing to do at this part of the game, I don't think. And so they go with a fullback dive on the inside. Look at get short. a first down. So now you're a yard short, and see, that's the kind of thing right there that you, you're not taking advantage of the opportunities that are given to you right there. Again, you just run the football for, like, for those three plays, and you're not in this position here, I don't think. I think just the way they've been running the football, it's proven enough that they're getting the job done. And that's, I mean, that's, I'm not an offensive coordinator by any means, so I'm not telling Mr. Darren Little what to do, but... Well, they're going to go for it. They here. are. And here's the thing. Hard if, count. Hard count. Molnar can get in any time he wants I was going to say, here's the thing. It's If it ain't broke, don't fix it. And I think Mason's, I think this is a statement play right here for the Comets. That's exactly what it was. And right there. <laughs> yeah, McCormick. Again, if they're going to play that tight and that close, McCormick will find the seam because as you have so adeptly pointed out, my young broadcasting partner. <laughs> they are winning the war up, up front. They're winning the war of the trenches, the Comets are. And that's, and that's how football games are won. And that is one thing, like I said, that's a great job there. And that's a great play call there by Little stating, hey, we're going we're gonna to win this game and we're going to shove it right down your throat. And that's what they're doing here again. Great job by Mason just making it happen. Inside handoff. It looks like a, another U run, new runner in there. Oh, Jackson Orlando gets a chance there to we go. come in. This is where you just continue to cycle out the running backs now and just continue to keep punishing. Yeah, let, let some guys build some stats, man, get some carries. That's what you got to do. Again, keep them fresh, keep them rolling it out, because this is a game where, again, you're going to be running the football every drive you have now. With a minute to go in the third quarter, this has happened because of Mason simply keeping the ball on the ground. And I say that, and he throws it out wide. But, you know, that's almost as good <laughs> as, a, as a run. If you think about it, you're getting it outside to probably one of your best open field runners. They have, they have probably worked on this so much and the gentleman that, that is able to run that play did an exceptional job. That was just, that was perfectly executed. You see Coach Kastner there, <laughs> ecstatic with the way that play turned out. You see Coach Lewis there on the sidelines along with Coach Popwell, there we go. Getting the coordinator some, some face time on TV here. Ball there. Keeps it himself this time. Runs into a host of Oak Hill's defenders. He'll get maybe one. But more importantly, the clock continues to run as the quarter will expire. And the Comets are going to find themselves up 21-6. to six. This is just the Comets right now flexing their muscle. That's what this is. There's a good look at quarterback Michael Molnar. Talking to some of the offensive coaches. So we've got another 12 minutes to go here. So we're going to reset this quarter. And hey, uh, not nothing fancy that quarter, man. No, it was. We're just going to run the football, and that's how, that's what we're going to do. You got a couple passes here and there just to make sure you know your wide receivers are, uh, you know, staying awake in this game, but. This is where this game's going to be won from now on. It's going to be won on the ground. And Mason is, they're looking to, again, 
they're going to look into kill the kill the clock here and and end it. Because the touchdown here, you're really putting no kills behind the eight ball. Yeah, uh, you know. You're forcing them to climb a mountain, an Everest sized mountain. Typical, typical wood chopper mentality. You keep pounding, you keep pounding, you keep pounding, and here you see our cable cast replay schedule. Of course, we're on live tonight on icrctv.com, on Twitter, on Facebook. We're all over the the World Wide Web, my friend. Yes, we are. But again, you know, you keep pounding, you keep pounding, and sooner or later, that tree's gonna fall. You're gonna hit the big one. And, you know, again, three yards in a cloud of dust, and there you go. We do need some more volunteers here at ICRC. So, you know, again, you get to learn how media works and, and have a lot of fun, work with some great people. Back to the action, Michael Monar gets outside the pocket, he's gonna tuck it down, knock a couple of Highlanders out of bounds as he gets close to another Comet first down. I believe he does have it. He does, they are moving the chains. Again, Molnar, he didn't, he didn't press the issue there. As you watch him, as he, you know, as he broke the broke containment there, he just went around and he, he wasn't sprinting. He was just gonna let things happen in front of him. You know, calls it quits when he goes out of bounds, and hey, smart, smart play there by Michael Molnar, who has been nothing short of solid tonight. Yeah, game, game, game management, he's been doing that all year. You know, nothing spectacular, got a great arm, but, you know, again, oh, I'm trying to get outside. McCormick, and <laughs> again, nice patient running as he waits for the defenders to, to establish position, then he tries to split him. <laughs> But let's see if they give him decent. Yeah, they gave gave him pretty decent forward. I was going to say they should. It should have been at least a maybe a two yard gain there. <laughs> now they're going to give him one. Hey, it beats, beats losing three. But look I at was going to say, look at that. He's just being patient. Lowers his pads. And you know what? That's a, that. I like to call that, and I've said it in previous broadcasts before. That's a professional running back right there. Doesn't force the issue. He lets things play out, and that's I mean right there. He could have been tackled for a three-yard loss, but no, he let it develop. Game position, he split them. They were on that there we wide go. throw again. And this time, well, that young man's going to go in. Kobe Lewis housed it. There we go. Again, the block was there. And here's the thing. If, you know, Mason's going to continue to punch in the mouth on the ground, but then you still have to be aware of everything else. And Molnar. Honor the pass, yeah. Exactly. Beautiful pitch and catch. Yeah, that's probably Look. the best pass he's had all night. I mean, that was gorgeous, and it was just a nice little swing pass well, out. I like, Boom. The, I like the way that he squared his feet up, got his left shoulder pointed at the target, got it out there quick and clean, and got it right now. Here's the thing. You let, you get the ball in the hands of your playmakers, let them make a play. The point after oh, oh is a worm burner, and it – Goes low and left, but again, might might have been the hold. Kicker says, no, nah, it wasn't me. It was a hold, man. You didn't <laughs> hand the ball down clean. I can't so, kick it if it's down clean, or if it's not down clean. Comments extend that lead, though, to 21 points. As they are now up 27-6. And, and, uh, See, here's the thing. Now it's – each team has missed an extra point now. So now it's not to the point where you have – to get the two-point conversion on one play. That's something to keep an eye on. However, the way things have gone by the comments, so here's the snap again. That'll look good. It looks like he just smashed it midway through the ball. It's kind of what it looked like. So you're telling me that he hooked it, huh? <laughs> just a bit outside. <laughs> Ruminski lined up for the kickoff. And again, they're going to go with the, the triple bouncer, nice high bouncer there. Tom of defense needs to get up there as he drags a few <laughs> defenders with him close to the 40 yard line. That was. Let's see who got that, yeah. I was going to say for a second there, I thought it was the kicker, but it was not. 
I was going to say, man, Ruminski did a good job of going up there making the play. Hodges with a nice return, though, as he, he played that off with a nice high bounce. And here we go as Devin Holt, again, working out of the pistol or out of the shotgun. All right, I'm going to give props to the tackler. That was Tyler Wilson, sophomore running back slash linebacker there. Got to give him props for coming up and making the key tackle on special teams. You know, you got to give the guys... Yeah, it was a nice Got to give hit. him some love there on, on special teams. That's nice hit. Okay, so we got a timeout. I guess Coach Kastner, I don't know if he's making some wholesale sub substitutions. I think he might be, because he might be giving <clears throat> some of the guys of the JV squad some time here. You know what, and that's, that's a smart move. If you can get him in, get him some experience because you got a couple key games coming up here. I mean, you have Sycamore next week at home here. The Battle of the Skies. Yeah, I was just going to say Battle of the Skies. Then you have a tough, a tough road match against Hamilton. Hamilton's no joke. No, they, again, that, that coaching staff up there has turned that program around. You finish out Lakota West. Oh, by, so by, yeah, one. by the way, the Battle of the Skies right here on ICRC TV. Got that right. Let's make sure you check us out. Okay, so Oak Hill's now set up for a second down and about three. Clock continues to run at 10.22 under for the game. Holt takes that snap, throws hard right. The defender almost got a hand on that. Can't tell who that was out there. He was getting mauled. I do know that. Yeah, but Heyman did a good job of coming down with the ball and leaning forward, but he's just a little bit short of first down yardage. As we'll call it three and a long third and a long two. Solid pitch and catch there by Oak Hills. Again, the clock continues to run. Oak Hills has to get something. They got to make something happen quick, too. Oh, good job on the read option as Holt just pulls it out and just finds the seam and just scampers his way through there. Cross midfield, good enough for an Oak Hill's first down. Holt's been impressive so far today. He's made a couple, couple smart decisions, a couple great plays. So right at midfield, Holt resets his receivers. Under center this time. Oh, and he's gonna oh. get drilled! <laughs> oh boy. Orlando holds him up. Jackson Hutchison just boomsticked him on that one. Well, I mean, they that's like the, the perfect storm. You meet at the quarterback, right? And a clean hit, too. Clean hit. Well, I mean, the fact of the matter is, is Hutchinson did the right thing. He did not lead with the crown of his head. He led with his shoulder in his hands. And Orlando worked him high and Hutchinson <laughs> working low. And that's a big loss. That's a good old WWE tag team right there. That was, whew. Yes, sir. That doesn't get you jacked up on the defense. I don't know what will. And it, the replacement quarterback tries to throw a screen pass and the ball flickers to the ground. But in all fairness, though, Devin Holt was down after the play. He definitely did feel the, the, the effects of that hit. So hopefully Devin Holt is okay. Because he did get hit pretty hard. That's Jackson, Jackson Schreiber into the contest. Yeah, here's that hit again. You a can sophomore. see. Ugh. Mr. Hutchinson and uh, Mr. Orlando, keep that one, buddy. Whew, that was nice. Yeah, put that one on your huddle highlights. Schreiber oh. does a good job of breaking out of the pack. Now he's running for his life. He gets across midfield. He gets knocked, knocked down by Hutchinson. 
And that's going to leave it as fourth and about, uh, we'll call it a long seven. Yeah, great job of keeping the ball there and, and tucking it by Schreiber, the sophomore quarterback, making a couple placements coming in. Fourth and seven. Looking, looking, looking. He floats it outside. Nice oh, job. That's a nice job of getting wow. his hand on that by number 15 for the Comets. That was Chris Olinger. Olinger, I'm sorry, the 5'11 senior defensive back comes in, makes you know, a great what play. I, what I like is his. He plays the ball the whole time, man. Gets he his did. Mid in there at the very end and just knocks it away. So. Turn Oak Hills, the Highlanders turn it over on down. So not only do they lose the rock, but I think, you know, they I don't know if their starting quarterback will be back after that pretty good shot that he took. You can see how much that play right there just meant to the to the comments. You see Coach Kastner and Coach Lewis just getting just jacked up there on a great play by Olinger. Who like you said, he followed it the whole way and made a great play on it. All right, well, we, now we got to find out. There's number 21 working his way in there. Number 14's at quarterback. Mason Mattingly, 6'4", 199-pound sophomore quarterback comes in. Obviously, Coach Castor feels pretty good with the way things are going right now. Switch quarterback, keep Molnar healthy for next week. And let Mr. Mattingly get some experience here. Hey, Friday night lights, man. Hey. Friday night lights. There's only one way to get this experience, my friend. Yeah, get in there and play. Get those game reps. Also, some wholesale changes along the offensive and defensive lines. But, look, they're going pretty much plain vanilla. No white house, no stuff like that. And there's your pal, Mr. Bates, running hard in between the tackles. There's Bates. Scra scrappy guy. That he is. So he keeps it in between the tackles and bangs her head for about seven. We're going to call it third and three. Yeah, it's one thing we see consistently from Mason. Like I said, over the last few years, it is a workmanlike performance by these running backs. And then again, it's been year after year after year. Gassner continues to churn out, like I said, workmanlike running backs. Picking up. The high pitch is Mr. Bates, pulls it down, gets ahead for a first down. Yeah, and we can see a lot of the, the offensive linemen underneath that, the starters down there underneath that tent and that cool zone they like to call it. <laughs> yeah. Some much needed hydration here. I mean, actually a gorgeous night for some football. Yeah, I mean, you couldn't ask for anything better. It was 72 riding over here, and when the sun set, I think it got into the mid to low 60s. Oh, Mattingly with the... There's that play again. Man. I tell you what, Lewis, Lewis likes making that catch. He does. He, now, yeah. I, I want to know when they're going to flip him and they're going to throw it to 11 and, and let 18 throw the block. Well, you know, <laughs> you probably should. He's probably sitting there thinking, you know what, enough of this. Nice job by the sophomore quarterback of getting the rock out there, though. He got it out there clean. I mean, Eli Jordan's the one. He's he's doing the work blocking here. He's probably thinking, you know, Coach, hey, you know, uh, toss the ball my way. Yeah, you know, I, play, I can catch know. one, too. <laughs> you know, I, I think somewhere down the line, I think there's going to be a play for that. I think they're going to wind him up, and then he's going to go make a make a move like he's going to make the block, and he's just going to rip downfield. Well, here's the thing. You, obviously, you're not going to do it in a game like this. Bates. You know finds the sled and tough as he tries to get lean forward for a first down. He's knocked well far back. Now I have seen more headpieces come off from Oak Hills this game than I have in any other game I've ever done for broadcasting. So you might want to keep tightening up those chin straps a little bit because that's the that's every bit the fourth or fifth one I've seen pop off so far. Tighten up the chin straps, grease up the snaps, you know. <laughs> Got to make good. sure. Hold here is what, yep. So the back judge 
throw that flag in there. You knew it was right in the area of a holding. Not quite sure who the guilty party was, but you're looking now at a second and 11. Oh. Or second and 13. I got to yeah. count. Yeah, well, that's right. He's going to keep walking. So. Yep. And again, that stops the clock, too, so. No, on a penalty, the clock then. Yeah, there we go. There yeah, we so go. Here we go, Bates. Oh, he's thinking about it. Boy, great job. He had one tackle to break, and he was going to hit pay dirt. <laughs> Here's the thing. That penalty yardage got it right back and more. Good enough for another Comet first down. Jake Bates, only 5'11", 174 pounds. He doesn't run like that. No. Doesn't run like that at all. And and definitely doesn't tackle like that either. Yeah, he's, he he's a, a missile. Lot, yeah, runs a lot bigger than that. It's we're under four minutes here now. Bates again taking that handoff, keeping those pads low, dragging tacklers with him as he's inside the 25-yard line. And this is just an impressive, impressive drive here by the Comets as they just look to kill this clock. And I mean, they're again they're daring Oak Hills to stop them, and, and Oak Hills has hadn't had an answer yet so far for for what we've seen up front. Even when the backups come in up front, they're still they're making them pay. It actually looks like no, they're keeping the majority of the. Uh, the starting, at least the starting right side is the same. Yeah, it's, the center. Yeah, yeah, just a couple here yeah, and there. Yeah, they're mixing them up, but yeah. Oh, and Bates <laughs> gets met in the backfield, almost slides away, but nope, nothing doing. That was Matthew Fulton about took the handoff from Mattingly there. Came in and, and popped Bates pretty good, but. See, and that's the thing about playing JV players on Friday night. You can't. You have to wait until Monday to show him that on film about the block that he missed. <laughs> <laughs> because they play on Saturday Saturday mornings typically. And so yeah, it's gotta take a couple of days before you can yeah, point that out to him. Yeah, yeah, point it out to him until he has to admit to it. Yeah, you know. <laughs> I don't yeah. know what you're talking about, coach. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah I didn't see it. Came out my stand slow. <laughs> Sorry, coach. Yeah, you know. Bates. With the pads low, dragging tacklers with him inside the 25 again. It's a gain of five there. Now we're looking at fourth and two. But the clock mercifully continues to run. We'll be under 205. Doesn't get any easier for the Highlanders, Chris. They next week they got they'll be home, but they're gonna. They're, they're, they've got a hot, pretty hot Hamilton team coming in. Yeah, Hamilton, uh, right, well, last we saw was up on Fairfield in a big GMC matchup. Hamilton's no joke. They're 0-2, but they don't play like they're 0-2, I'll tell you that. And he's going to lose almost, it. Huh? Yeah, he thought about thought thought he could lean forward and get it, but just night. well. So he's going to be short, sure, it looks like, yeah, they're switching it up now. Or are they? Yeah, yep, so, they've made that determination. So the Highlander's going to take over with 129 to go. And, and Sycamore seems to be down this year. They'll come in here next week for the fourth game of the season. Folks, we're only playing a six-game season here in Ohio high school football. And there you see the play where the quarterback tried to twist out of that, that tackle. But, again, that spot looks to be relatively good. Aviators are, are not quite what they've been in the last couple of years. You know, again, they're always a game squad. They just lost a lot of talent the last couple of years. And Comets theoretically could be 4-0 headed, headed into week five. Well, here's the thing. Lakota West just shut out Sycamore 33 to nothing tonight. Lakota West, we know, is no joke. Yeah, I mean, Lakota but, West, you know, gave Coleraine their very first league loss in years. At the game one of the season. Yeah. yeah. That was a statement victory right there. But now you're going to get Sycamore, a team that literally just came off of a 33 to nothing loss, who are now 
Sycamore is now one and two on the season, having to come here now in a big rivalry game. Are they going to be up for it? It's kind of tough. I mean, well, okay. Mason's got to feel pretty good about this. I mean, oh, coming into it as well. So. Absolutely. Again, the sophomore quarterback. Oh, oh there's a nice throw. And the defender actually made the very wrong move as number 13 goes in. That was Miles Oak Jackson Hills. got turned around the defensive back for Mason. That's going to give Coach Lewis some indigestion tonight on the uh, defensive backside. Well, again, if we see it on the replay, again, the young man went for the ball and he just did, you know, if you're going to make that move, son, get. Yeah, but there's only one on way it. to do it, and it's to make that play, and he didn't. And then next thing you know, he's off to the races. And that's Kyle Toon, sophomore. Once he caught that, I mean, that, see, now that changes things a little bit. You only have 41 seconds to go in this game, but, I mean, as opposed to 21 to 6. Yeah, 21 13. They're going to try to go for two and make it 21 14. Or, or 27, 27 I'm 14, sorry. Yeah. I can't read or count, so I'm, I'm struggling here tonight, Steve. That's why you got me here. Yeah, you man. got that right. <laughs> <laughs> Couldn't do much without you on this one. No, uh, but they, you know, they, the thing is, is that, you know, you want to give some of your sophomores, give them a chance on a Friday night. Yeah, here's the play here again. Hey, hey, and I like the way the quarterback stepped up and threw the ball. And honestly, I mean, I like, I honestly like everything about that play. He went for that ball. You could see he read it turned it and just made a break unfortunately he yeah, turned no 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 you don't go for that ball with one hand young well man. And, and i was just going to say the way he broke he broke inside as opposed to the outside on that and back again because he made the i like the fact he was going for the ball is kind of what i'm going for here as opposed to just yeah but going for the ball means diving forward for two well, and you got to make the play and, and you know on the hindsight one. there i mean yeah. it's not again like you said if you're going to do it you better make sure you get it otherwise well, I mean, the guy's going to house it and that's what happened that's a teaching moment in films tomorrow again hopefully it's not a sophomore that's gonna you know <laughs> that be playing J a jv game and have to wait till monday for it but again teaching moments about that and they're going right back to him and that time he tips it away he does there we go see he learned just like that well yeah but he only had <laughs> 10 yards behind him rather than the entire well, I, field i mean so. hey but no the quarterback that delivers a pretty decent ball but yeah this time he he did not it, he didn't throw it away from the defender he threw it you know made it a 50 50 ball but he didn't put enough air underneath Ex yeah. it. yeah so score remains 27-12. We've got 41 seconds left to go. Now, if you're old kills, do you put one on the ground? Do what do you have to lose? Yeah, I mean, you know, again, it looks like the Comets are going to go with a hand squad. They know what's up. I, I yeah. mean, it, it's to be expected. I mean, hey, make a – these are things that you're going to be able to – that you can work on in the – you know, in a real game that you would normally, you know, work on in practice very rarely, to be honest with you. But. Well, let's just see yeah. here. So, yeah. Try and build some momentum moving into next week. They're going to load it up. Ooh, and, and he, he doesn't he doesn't put it on the ground. <laughs> that was uh yeah, that's, I mean, I'm sorry. She didn't put it to ground, Kaylee. She actually uh, hit the wedge off the toe, if you will. She was going to make sure that that ball was. Uh, I tell you what, it, it came. That ball came out hard. It came out knuckly. It didn't bounce. But boy, I tell you what, great job by whoever received it for the commas of getting low and just covering it up. I tell you what, I was watching her in, in pregame. She's got a good leg on her. She's got. She's got some power, and then we saw that there. She was going to make it difficult, and that's one thing, honestly, for your hands team. That's a difficult play to make. Oh, please. If you're hitting the middle of the ball and you're pounding it, you know, not. she was probably trying to put it in the ground and missed, and then just she just hit a low worm burner. But the Comet's going to do the smart thing, take a knee. You know, and Again, so nice they, work on like performance here. Yeah, they will not have to take a snap. So the Comets... We'll move to 3-0. and The Highlanders will move to 0-3. And, and, folks, this is probably one of the most spirited and one of the best 0-3 teams here in town. So the Highlanders, fortunately enough, get to go home next week and face 
a very, very improving Hamilton squad. And the, the Mason Comets, well, they'll be right back here in Mason next week to face the one and two Sycamore Aviators for the Battle of the Skies. Again, another one of those neighborhood rivalries. Chris, it's been great having you here with us tonight, buddy. Steve, it was great to be back here in the booth and, and broadcasting with you again. And it's a nice win for Mason. And it's going to be interesting to see how everything plays out. And, and how did Coach Lewis do too, huh? I'll, I'll, I'll talk to him this week and we'll see how I'll, I'll critique him here. But <laughs> overall, <laughs> overall, it was, a, again, great job by the Mason Comets. As, as, as a coach, you have to be thrilled with what you saw outside of a couple plays here and there, which very, very rarely is every game going to be spotless and perfect. You know, you're going to have a couple mistakes here and there, and there was we saw, but Mason well, came out and did, did, they did a great job. Yeah, and they did everything, the keys to the game. They, 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 they you know, won the battle in the trenches, and, and quarterback played smart. So for my partner, Chris Asbrock, for the producers, directors at ICRC, guys, you did an exceptional job. The camera guys, all volunteers, an exceptional job. This is Steve Parker saying thank you for joining us on ICRC TV Friday Night Sports, and we'll catch you next time right here on Friday Night Football. Good night, everyone.